Let us continue the lesson, children. He stood gazed down on the motionless man. The man over there was motionless and Sado stood there gazing at that particular person. The pulse was there, the heartbeat was also faint and if the surgery is conducted, he is sure to recover. And after recovery, he will be handed over to the Japanese police and once again he will lose his life. This man must have extraordinary vitality or he would have been dead by now. Extraordinary vitality, rare energy. Extraordinary, rare. Vitality, energy. Why does Sado say so? Because though his body is torn apart in the, uh, by the waves and then by the rocks on the shore, but still the man is alive. He has not lost his life. That is the reason why Dr. Sado says that he has extraordinary vitality. Or you would have been dead by now. But then he was very young, perhaps not yet 25. So what is the reason for so much of energy in his body? He is very, very young. He must not be even 25 years old. And that is the reason why he was able to survive all this hardship. You mean die from operation? Hannah asked. Yes, Sado said. So that's the doubt. Either the man will die if the surgery is performed late or if the surgery is going to be complicated. Or if the man is going to survive the surgery, but still he will die in the hands of the police. Now Hannah asks, are you sure that the man is going to die during the surgery? Yes, Sado said. So, Sado had his own doubt because the pulse is faint and the heartbeat is also faint. There, is, there are chances for this particular man to die. Hannah considered this doubtfully and when she did not answer, Sado turned away. At any rate, something must be done with him, he said, and first he must be washed. He went quickly out of the room and Hannah came behind him. She did not wish to be left alone with the white man. He was the first she had seen since she left America and now he seemed to have nothing to do with those whom she had known there. Here he was her enemy, a menace living or dead. Menace, danger for them. So he is a danger for their lives because he is American and having an American in a Japanese house is a danger for them. That is what she feels now. So somehow he has to be sent away. So he is considered as a living menace for them now. She turned to the nursery and called Yumi. Nursery, it is a room in the house where children play. Room for kids. So she called Yumi. But the children heard her voice and she had to go in for a moment and smile at them and play with the baby boy, now nearly three months old. Over the baby's soft black hair, she motioned with her mouth, Yumi, come with me. So she, she was forced to go in because the children who were in the nursery heard her voice and they started calling for her. So she went inside, she cuddled, she just held the baby for some time in her hand and she just motioned, gave signal to the uh, person there, Yumi, to follow her out. I'll put the baby to bed, Yumi replied. He is ready. She went with Yumi into the bedroom next to the nursery and stood with the boy in her arms while Yumi spread the sleeping quills on the floor and laid the baby between them. Then Hannah led the way quickly and softly to the kitchen. The two servants were frightened at what their master had just told them. The old gardener, who was also a house servant, pulled the few hairs on his upper lip. The master ought not to heal the wound of this white man, he said bluntly to Hannah, bluntly, directly.
this gardener had been in that house for a long time, right from the time of Sado's father. So, he speaks with them all so closely and that is the reason that made him speak so directly to Hannah. So, he tells like this, the master ought not to heal the wound of this white man, he said bluntly to Hannah. The white man ought to die. First he was shot, then the sea caught him and wounded him with her rocks. If the master heals what the gun did and what the sea did, they will take revenge on us. Heals, cures. See the superstitious belief of this particular gardener. The gardener says, first there was a gunshot which wanted to take away his life. Then the sea was trying to take away his life with the help of the waves and the stones in the sea. And now if the master is going to cure this particular person, definitely all these two will definitely take revenge, which means that they are definitely going to be under trouble because he is an American there. I will tell him what you say. Hannah replied courteously, courteously, politely. The reason is he is an elderly person in that particular house. He had been there in that particular house for a longer period of time and Hannah is very young and for his age and for his thought and for his hard work in that particular house, his bonding to that particular house, all these things made Hannah speak to him very politely. She says, I will go and inform the master whatever you said right now. But she herself was also frightened, although she was not superstitious as the old man was. Superstitious, the one who has blind faith. Now, people do have lot of superstitious beliefs, especially if you just see in Indian society, you do have like if a black cat grows, goes through, it is a bad uh, sign. Like that, you know, so many things people used to speak. Likewise, even Japanese people, they had the superstitious belief that definitely the sea and the gunshot, which did not take away his life, will definitely come and take revenge on this doctor's family if doctor is going to cure. But Hannah did not have any superstitious belief. But she had a fear that because he is an American and he, they are going to give... Uh, 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 keep a person in their house, an American in their house, it is going to be a problem for a Japanese doctor because Americans were the deadly enemy. Could it ever be well to help an enemy? Nevertheless, she told Yumi to fetch the hot water and bring it to the room where the white man was. Nevertheless, in spite of. Still, the action was going on. There was a thought whether they should save this particular person and whether he should throw him away back. Servants were not happy, but still now action is going on. Hannah had told Yumi to bring hot water to the room. She went ahead and slid back the partitions. Slid means slipped or moved away. So that Yumi can enter in with the hot water bowl. Sado was not yet there. Yumi following put down her wooden bucket. Then she went over to the white man. When she saw him, her thick lips folded themselves into stubbornness. Stubbornness, uh, like no, it became hard. How come the doctor had taken this particular person into the house? How come he can bring an American into the house? So all these thoughts made her feel hard. I have never washed a white man, she said, and I will not wash so dirty a one now. So, Hannah's idea was to ask Yumi to wash th 
this particular white man. But Yumi says, I have never washed a white man. I will not wash him now. And he is looking so dirty. And such a dirty person, I have never washed in my life. This is what she said. Hannah cried at her severely. Severely here means harshly cried, shouted. She became so angry. A servant speaking against the mistress of the house. This is something she couldn't tolerate there. You will do whatever, what your master commands you. There was so fierce a look of resistance upon Yumi's round dull face that Anna felt unreasonably afraid. But what happened? Yuni turned back and she stared when Hannah said, you will do what your master said. But Yuni was looking, she resisted whatever Hannah said. And she was looking so sternly and harshly, giving a look, harsh look back. So Hannah herself felt afraid for a moment. After all, if the servant should report something, that was not as it happened. So what was the reason for her fear? Suppose the servants are going to go and inform the police that... Uh, the doctor had brought in an American soldier and they have rescued him. They are treating him like that, exactly not telling what had ever happened, what would happen to them. So she was a bit scared now. Very well, she said with dignity. You understand we only want to bring him to his senses so that we can turn him over as a prisoner. I will have nothing to do with it, you may said. I am a poor person and it is not my business. So, Hannah says, see, we have brought him in to cure him and hand him over to the police. That is all. We don't have any other idea of saving him. For that, Uni says, I am a poor servant. I don't have anything with this. I don't have any concern for this act that you are doing because she doesn't want to get herself involved being a Japanese servant. Then, please, Hannah said gently, return to your work. So she is also uh, very angry. Hannah is very angry. The servant is refusing to take the order. So she said, okay, you can leave this place. Take your own work. At once Yumi left the room. But this left Hannah with the white man alone. She might have been too afraid to stay had not her anger at Yumi's stubbornness now sustained her. Sustained her, kept going. She was not able to tolerate a servant speaking like that. So she was bubbling with anger and that anger just covered the fear that she had in her mind. So she was now bold there along with that American prisoner of war who was so dirty and bleeding there. Stupid you me, she muttered fiercely. Is this anything but a man and a wounded helpless man? So she ta talks to her herself. Yumi is very stupid. After all, he is a man, a wounded man who is lying con unconscious. So what is he going to do if she is going to clean him? In this way, the thoughts are ringing in the minds of Hannah. In the conviction of her own superiority, she bent impulsively. suddenly without caring so now she never bothered whether that man is a white man or what whether he is wounded whether he is dirty whether he is smelly she didn't bother there was only anger in her mind and that anger that was there in her mind made her jump into action. She bent impulsively and untied the knotted rugs that kept the white man covered. So the dress that he was wearing, she just removed the knots. When she had his breast bare, she dipped the small 
clean towel that Yumi had brought into steam into the steaming hot water and washed his face carefully. The man's skin, though rough with exposure, was a fine texture and must have been very blonde when he was a child. Blonde, pale gold in color. See the observation of this particular lady. So she just says, uh, she took the white towel, that uh, the small piece of towel that was brought by Yumi. She just cleaned the face and she is talking about the texture of his skin. Though through exposure it has become rough, tough and rough, but still it was looking, the texture was very fine. The skin was very soft. And must have been very blonde when he was a child. When he was a young child, it would have had definitely a golden glow. Let us continue in the next class, children. To receive our lessons online, please press the subscribe button and you will receive the latest updates.